showed you what the float did, but they were mainly just little exercises, not really full-blown examples of web pages. So what I want to do today <coughs> is I want to build an example of a page that will use the float um, and use it to, to do something that would otherwise maybe be very difficult to do. Um, I, I was thinking about this on the way in um, as I was running late. Uh, and you probably could do this without using the float, but it would be a pain. All right? It would be much more difficult and much more convoluted and would not have the good results. Let me describe the layout that we want to accomplish and then we'll talk about how we're going to accomplish it. And maybe even we'll talk a little bit about if we didn't use the float, how we would accomplish it. What we want to do <coughs> is I want to make a little picture gallery. All right? <coughs> and I want the gallery to be laid out like this. All right, that's the window. I want the banner here. All right. I want a navigation, even though in this example I'm only going to make one page, right? So we, we won't have other pages to link to. But um, I'll make the navigation nonetheless, just, you know, just, you know, given the fact that in, in many cases there would be a navigation there. Then I want to have sort of a grid of pictures with captions underneath them. Like that. All right? <clears throat> if we were not going to use the float, that would be difficult. This, this, and this would be a piece of cake. But these, putting them side by side, could be a little more problematic, especially given the fact that we want to line up the caption directly underneath the picture. All right. We could put images side by side, but then to get the text directly underneath them would be very difficult. We'd probably have to do something with absolute positioning or... I'm not really sure. Maybe there is an easy way to do it and it's just not hitting me. Uh, but for me, the easy way to do it is to use the float. So here's what we're going to do. <coughs> we're going to float... Um, we're going to use floating for the main sort of layout, in other words, for the main three sections of the page, and then we're going to use floating for the little pictures within our main area. So we're going to kind of use, remember, whenever you float something, um, you float it within a container. So. We're going to float those three big divs, and then we're going to float inside that third div. We're going to float the, the, the four little divs inside of that. So let's go about designing this, and we'll, we'll do it uh, one step at a time. I'm going to copy one of my old pages. Um, let's see. Just to give me a starting point. All right. <clears throat> this is one of the earlier examples. I'll go in and edit it. This will be a gallery about origami. The 
these will be photos from the 2011 Fava Folding Festival. That is hard to say, Fava Folding Festival. And here we'll just have some pretend links over on the side. Um, we'll just leave those even though they're not going to link to anything in this particular example. And then this will be my main content div. All right. This will be where the gallery will appear inside there. Now I removed all the style code from here. <clears throat> so right now if we were to view this page, it would just look like this. All right. So let's go in and let's start off by achieving just the main sections positioning. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I am going to um, start off by giving these things colors, even though eventually I might remove the colors. All right. I do that a lot in debugging just because it helps me see exactly where things are. Sometimes it's, it's hard to tell exactly why things are laid out the way they are. Whereas if you give everything a different color, it's clear. Okay, the red section is bigger than I thought it would be. What's the red section again? Oh, that's the nav. All right. So I'm going to position just the three main sections to start. And I'll get it like this. I'm going to do all these using the float. And then I'll go in and I'll position the little pictures inside. So our first goal is to get this working. So what I'm going to do is I'll just add some dummy text in the content area just so I can see it. Pictures go here. I'm going to go and I'm going to make my banner. To start out, I'm going to give it a background of yellow, just so I can see it. I'm going to give it a width of 100%, and I'm going to say float left. I'm then going to give my navigation color of, let's see, ah, banner I gave a background color of yellow, a width of 100% and floated it to the left. Background I'll give to this will be red, color, white, width. Let's make it 200 pixels. And I'll also make it float left. Finally, I may fiddle with this a little bit, but to start out, I'm going to make the content have a background of green, color white, a width of 500 pixels, and float left. Now, someone described to me how this layout is going to work. What's this going to look like? Right. Banner will take up the entire uh, top of the window, right? It'll be yellow. Nav will be red all the way to the left, underneath the banner, right? Right, because it won't fit. Uh, that, that's, I guess, one of the, probably the key point I was trying to get. There's, I think, two points of me asking this question. And if we can pause for a second, that's the first point. 
the first point is because I've made the width of the banner 100%, that's everything, right? There's no way that the nav is going to be able to float alongside of it. So we are guaranteed that the nav is going to be underneath it. All right, just because, you know, 100%, that's it. No more space. So the banner is going to fall down underneath it. Um, what about the nav and the content? The nav and the content. The nav will be there and take up 200 pixels. I made that 500 pixels. So, effectively, if the window is bigger than 700 pixels, all right, the nav and the content area will be side by side. If the window is smaller than 700 pixels, then the content area is going to pop down below the navigation. All right. So let's look and let's see if I am right. All right. I'm at least partly right. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, and again, even then, I, I lose my little bit of victory by forgetting to, to have it displayed. Uh, but yeah, uh, we notice that the, that the banner indeed takes up the entire top. All right. There's no room for the nav to, to slide alongside of it. All right. Therefore, it goes to the, to the next uh, area. It goes underneath it. And the window being bigger than 700 pixels, the content and the nav can fit side by side. As I narrow this down, there will be a point where, boom, that goes down underneath it. Is that a good thing? I don't know. I, I guess if you have, enough, if you have a narrow enough uh, browser window, that might be a good way to look at this. All right. Or on a mobile phone, you have all your links on top and have the content underneath it. So that could be a reasonable way to do it. Now again, those colors, of course, are hideous, right? That's, that's not a very good color combination. Um, at least not, well, let me rephrase that. I, I won't say those colors are hideous. I will say that those colors are not a good combination for the content that I'm trying to, to, to portray. Uh, there's no really rhyme or reason for having those particular colors there. And they don't particularly look good. Uh, in this case. In other cases, maybe they would. I don't know. But what uh, I'm going to keep those there at least for a little while um, so that we, we understand the positioning uh, of everything. All right. Let's see. Oh, <clears throat> what if I want to put some space between these? Notice that they're butted up right against each other. If I wanted to put space between the divs, what, what could I use? A margin, right. Again, remember, margin is the space between stuff. So if I wanted to put um, a margin, uh, if I wanted to put some space between um, the, the, uh, all these divs, I could say, on this one, I could say a margin of 10 pixels. Remember, with margin, you can specify margin several different ways. I can say margin 10 pixels, and then all four of the margins margin top, margin right, margin left, mar or, I'm sorry, margin bottom, margin left will be set to 10 pixels. I can specify them individually. So I could say margin top. 10 pixels, margin left, 20 pixels, or I could specify them in pairs and say margin 10 pixel, 5 pixel. And if I do that, it just goes like clockwise. Top would be 10 pixel, right would be 5 pixel, bottom would also be 10 pixel, and left would be 5 pixel. So if we go and we tack these margins on here, let's put margins both on the 
content and the navigation. Notice that, again, that puts some space. <laughs> Put some space in between there. All right. Now, if you remember, if I'm not mistaken, we did this with a fixed layout, right? And I was sitting calculating all those things, and I was saying, well, let's see, you know, I want that to be 50 from the top and 75. From... I did like the math to figure out, well, if the height of it is this and the position of it is this and the position of this other guy should be the height. Plus, I did all that math. With the float, you're free from doing that. Didn't do a bit of math. So if something changed about this, I wouldn't need to go back in and change uh, positions. If I, if I made the banner higher, for example, if I put more text, or if the user resizes the, the page, or if the user uh, resizes the fonts. I don't have any like absolute numbers in there, so this is a lot more flexible. And, and this, this, this sort of layout is, is how I do most of the pages that I'm doing on, on smaller sites anyhow. All right. Now, um, now we want to, um, well, let's put a little bit of padding in here too because I don't like how the text butts up against the side. So let's put five pixels of padding on each of these guys. Oops. Remember, the padding goes on to the total. So by putting padding on there, that made the nav a little bit wider. And that was just enough to bump that content underneath it. Now you might say, gee, I don't ever want the content to fall down underneath it. We'll address that issue, not necessarily today, but we will address that issue in, in one of the future examples. All right, now I want to go in and I want to put my pictures in there. I think I can get rid of the colors now because I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with the way it looks. What I'll do just to, to keep the... Uh, keep some sort of visual cue about what the sections are. Instead, I'll put a border on, on each of them. Border, one pixel, solid, pound sign, Again, border's another one of those that I could specify border width, border color, border style, and show those as three different attributes. Or I can take the shortcut and say border, one pixel solid, pound sign CC. I usually go for the shortcut. Um, CSS is smart enough to know that pound sign C, 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 C has to refer to the color, right? Because that doesn't make sense as the border style or the border width. So if you're wondering, like, how does it know which is which? Well, the values are such that they only make sense for one of the parameters here. So let's go and let's put a border on each of these. And now let's go put the divs for our pictures in. And I'm going to start out not styling. I'm not going to style the divs at all. I'm just going to put my four image divs in here. So I'll put a div. I'm not putting any style in there. I'm going to get a little sloppy with my alt description and my paragraph caption just in the interest of time because I can't remember what I saved as these four pictures. I just picked four pictures and called them one, two, three, four. So, 
you shouldn't say something like picture one is an alt attribute because that doesn't tell anyone anything. All right, but I'm going to get sloppy and, and do that. Now I'll go and and likewise my caption will say picture one. But again, you know that really isn't good. You should be more descriptive. And I'm going to go and duplicate this four times or duplicate it three times for each of the four pictures. Now, again, notice that there's no style assigned to these pictures. So how would we expect this to look? There's no style assigned to those pictures or those divs or paragraphs or anything. So how would we expect those to look? Just stacked right on top of each other. We haven't specified a layout for this aspect of it, therefore it's just going to do the basic flow and have boom, 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 boom right down the line. So let's go and do this. And sure enough, there's our three pictures. Let me go and change that. And believe it or not, these are all made with origami, which means that every one of these pictures was made from a single sheet of paper. All right? And it's a little hard to see. There's a good one. There's a bull. There's a dragon. There's a beetle. These pictures, um, you know, download the example and look, take a good, if for, for no other reason, even if you don't care about the HTML code, take a look at the pictures because these are really, really, really amazing. There's actually a PBS documentary on this and it, it's mind-boggling the stuff they do, but keep in mind that all of these are made with a single sheet of paper that has not been ripped or cut or anything like that. They've just folded. And there, it, again, it's amazing what folks do when they want to avoid work, I guess, you know, and what they do, uh, you know, in their spare time. At any rate, <clears throat> so as predicted, these appear stacked on top of each other. Well, we don't really want that, right? We want some of them to be alongside of each other. Now, let's consider how we could do this. We could give each one of those an absolute position. Ooh, that sounds like too much work, all right? And it doesn't sound like a very flexible solution either, especially given the fact that we're floating that one div and that div could pop down below it, right? So an absolute position isn't a good idea. We could give these a relative position. In other words, this one's here. This one would give it sort of a negative top and a positive left and push it over to the side. We could do that as well. But the real solution, the real elegant, um, straightforward solution is to float these. All right. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. What I'm going to want to do is float all of these to the left. All right. Now, in doing that, I'm going to do just a wee bit of math and look and see that all of these images are 240 by 180. All right. So the, the first number is the width. So the width of 240 means that uh, two of them will be 480. All right. Now, what did I make my content div? I made it 500, but with the padding and all that, I'm going to bump, just for safety's sake, I'm going to bump the width of that up to 600. So I can clearly fit two of them in. I don't want to cut it close. All right. Now, all these four divs, I want to treat the same, right? I want to make all of them, give each of them a width of, say, 280, all right? So it will comfortably fit within... Um, the, the content area, so two of them rather will comfortably fit within the content area. So I'll, I'll give them say a width of like 280 or so. And I, you know, who knows, maybe I want to give them a background color or maybe I want to give them a, a border or I don't know. The bottom line is I want to treat all these the same. All these conceptually are the same. They're all pictures of origami things, all right? 
and with a caption. So conceptually these are all the same and again as you know a design principle is things that are the same should appear the same. So I could go in and give each one of these an ID. All right. And call that one picture one, picture two, picture three, picture four. All right. If I decide to add pictures to it, then I'd say picture five, picture six, picture seven, and so on. What's a, maybe a better way to do it than give each one of them a separate ID? A class. Give them a class. Remember, you give it an ID if there's only one of them on the page. All right. There's only one navigation. There's only one banner. There's only one main content area. So those we give IDs to because they're special. We're treating those a certain way and we're treating nothing else on the page that way. In this case though, I have four divs that all are the same. All right? I don't want to treat any of them special. I want them to look the same. In fact, it's a good design principle to have them look the same. Because if I made one of them look different, People are going to look at that and start wondering, I wonder why they made that one different, right? So if I really don't want them to be different, um, I can go and give each one of them a class. If I want them to mostly be the same and different, I can always add an ID to the one that I want to be a little bit different. Maybe give it a different background color. Let's say if it was like the prize winner, the, the, the winner for the best uh, uh, work in, in this particular show. But that's not the case in, in, in here. I want all of them to look the same. So what I can do is I can create a style based not on an HTML tag, all right, not on a ID, but on a class. How do you do that? Well, in your CSS file, you start the class with a period, and I can say, Give it something like picture. All right. And I'm going to give it, as I said, a width of 280 pixels so that it comfortably fits within the, um, comfortably fits, so two of them rather, comfortably fits within the content div. And I'm going to say, by the way, float them to the left. That's all I need to do in the CSS. Now in my HTML code, I have to tell each of these that it belongs to the class of picture. So I'll say class equals picture. And I'll do that for each of these. And there we go. Side by side with each other. Caption immediately underneath the picture. Um, and we're good to go. What if we want to bring the caption up closer to the picture? I'm thinking there's a margin in there. All right. So if I go like this and say in the thing that's called a picture every image give it a margin of zero pixels And everything that is a paragraph tag, also give it a margin of zero pixels. I'm guessing that that tightens it up and puts it right underneath there. Now, I'm still not liking this 100%. <laughs> All right. Why? Because, again, let's assume I had a, a more descriptive caption. 
at a glance, or let's say I had a bunch of these, let's say I had 20 of these, it wouldn't be clear as picture one, this guy or that guy, right? Because the, the, the caption is equal distant uh, from each of the pictures, the picture above it and the picture below it. How could I make it so that there was um, more space, you know, so that the caption for picture one was closer to picture one than it was to picture three? How could I do that? Put a margin on the bottom of the paragraph. Very good. So I could say margin let's see, I want Margin of top of zero pixels, margin of the right of zero pixels, margin on the bottom of 10 pixels, margin on the left of zero pixels. And there we go. Now let's make it bigger still. All right, and now it should be clear what caption goes with what um, picture. A um, <clears throat> couple things to notice. If you look at this CSS for this, even though the CSS is doing a lot, there's not a lot of instructions in here. All right. The one temptation that, that good students in this class have, all right, is to micromanage their CSS, is to put in style rules for everything and, and, and try to control every aspect of the layout. Between the flow and the um, different things, um, uh, between the flow and floating and, and, and all that, the browser will do a lot for you. All right. For example, notice I don't, other than assigning a margin of the paragraph, I don't really do anything to the positioning of that paragraph. Why not? Well, paragraph's a block tag. Block tag by definition is going to appear underneath the image. All right. Because if we look at our HTML code, we have an image which is an inline tag followed by a block tag, so that P is going to appear directly underneath the image. And the size and the floating of that is going to make sure that um, two of them fit within that. Now, notice because I floated everything, all right, that again, if this gets below a certain size, that pops down below. Now, that might be good, you might want it to do that, or that might be bad, and you say, no, I don't want it to do that. I, I want it always to stay on one line. Yes? Um, why would you ever want that to happen? Like, for what, excuse me, example, why a website would want that? A website might want that, again, uh, because they would consider it to be a better look like on a mobile phone. Oh. All right? Because a mobile phone, um, I guess it depends on, on your model, but Mine has a width of, I think my screen is 480 by 640. And, and mobile phones are, are typically oriented differently, right? Uh, you know, a, a computer screen is, is always wider than it is tall. Where a mobile phone, at least mine, it depends how it's oriented. If I have it oriented vertically, it's narrower than it is uh, tall. If I turn it, then it's wider than it is there. But you might want to do something like this on a mobile page. Oftentimes you'll see mobile pages styled very similar to this. All right? So that would be one option of when you'd want to do that. All right? But let's say I don't want to do that. All right? uh, if, if I'm talking about a site that I don't necessarily expect will get a lot of mobile traffic, but I expect it to be, I would agree that that's a little annoying. <laughs> All right? So, Let's lock that down. Let's do everything we've done here, except let's um, make sure that it doesn't, um, it doesn't, the, the, the content never, never floats down below the navigation. How do you suppose we can do that? 
Does anyone remember the does anyone remember the TV game show Name That Tune? You know, they would say I can name that tune in ten notes. I can name that tune in eight notes. Should play we should play code that programming change. How many lines do you think it's going to take to do this? I think it's going to take one HTML tag, starting an end tag, and one line in CSS. So, how do you suppose I'm going to do that? Just, just as a question, what if you just took the float out of the picture? Took the float out of the picture? No, unfortunately, if we took the float out of the picture, then these would all be stacked vertical on top of each other. All right. What we're going to do is remember that things happen within a container. So, I'm going to go and save this example just so that we have, just so that we, we keep a copy of it, you know, so that, that we have it to refer to. But I'm going to make a second copy of it. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to wrap this whole thing in a container. All right, so there's my one HTML tag, right? Let me save it. Let me then go and put in my one CSS rule. <clears throat> what do you suppose that one CSS rule is going to do? It's going to be for the container. It's going to give the container a width such that there's always enough width in the container to hold the navigation and the content side by side. So, we could do the exact math, but I'm going to approximate. All right? I know that the navigation is going to take up 200 pixels, and this is going to take up 600 pixels. So that's 800 right there. So if I make the container 800, or if I make the container less than 800, it, it's doomed. It's not going to work, right? Because there's not enough space for it. When I add on the border in both directions on the nav and content, there's four more pixels. Uh, some margin, there's so many more pixels and blah, blah, blah. It's too early to do this math. I'm going to assume that all that extra stuff that affects the width doesn't add up to 100. And I'm going to make the width to this 900 pixels. And then when I go and view it, it's side by side. And even if I make it smaller, it stays side by side. Why is the reason for that? Because again, things exist within containers. And if you float something or if you give something a percentage size, it's always a percentage of what? Floated in what? Floated in whatever contains it. All right? Um, let's see. Um, just lost my train of thought. Um, Oh, so if I make that container big enough to always fit the navigation and the content area, adding on the padding and margin and so on and so forth, then I can guarantee that no matter how big I size it. Without the container, the container for those things becomes a window. And the window's size can fluctuate as, as the user makes it bigger or smaller. When I put it within a container, then the container of those things is no longer the window, but the container is my container div. 
and I can assign a size to that. All right. Now, we can even get fancier than this if we want by, and I'm still within my name that tune one style rule, I can put a margin of zero pixels auto on that and center that in the page. So as it gets bigger and smaller, the whole container moves and keeps it centered. And then, oh, the fun we can have from here. All right. Um, um, if I wanted to do that, I think I would give it a left margin to push it over. Zero pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels. And then, well, I, I guess I need to do that on the um, picture as well, or the, the paragraph as well. Probably a better way than trying to center it. And then you could push it over to, to be the size that you want it to be. I could then do something like give the container a background color. background color of, it's a gray day, so we'll make it gray. Or not. Oh, never mind. I know what's going on here. could give the body a background color or a background <coughs> image. And I can give my other divs a background color of white. Oops. and have it look like that if I want. Could also give it a background image, right? And then the background image would sort of be peeking out behind there if I, if I prefer to do a color. All right. Um, now the interesting thing is, is let's say I want it to be oriented this way. banner, nav, and then content. All right. Again, I'm going to make a copy of this one. should be able to do this all with CSS. I can make the width of the nav be 100%. Maybe make the width of the container only 
650, let's say, and in my nav, make my LIs be displayed as inline instead of block. All right, things are a little off with that. You know, I, I could probably dot my I's and cross my T's and line it up a little bit better. But essentially, that's, that's what we were looking for. All right. Oh, you want more space between those? Okay. We can put A. can say inline block. That's a neat little trick to let it sometimes act like inline, sometimes act like a block and give it a margin of 20 pixels. You want it centered. Nav UL margin 0 pixel auto. And away we go. So again, a little bit of fiddling to get it look exactly the way we want, but essentially we did that. Now again, notice, and, and if you want to experiment with this, you know, try to do some of these layouts, try to do this layout using other sorts of positioning. Uh, you, you'll really find it will be very difficult. The floating, even though it's a little confusing at first, really makes your life uh, a, a lot easier. All right. Um, questions about this? Um, my advice again is to take and play with these examples. You know, um, really um, a way that that time-honored way of people learning how to program or how to code something is to take an example and play with it and fiddle with it. And what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? and see the result. Okay, I will upload these examples. Um, we'll see you in lab.